Hi, thanks for joining me for today's devotion. This is a third in a three-part series on how we're saved by Scripture alone, by grace alone, and today, saved by faith alone. Our Bible verse is Romans 3, verse 28. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul tells us how to be saved. Before God, a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This isn't always how it works in our dealings with each other. With one another, we often justify ourselves by the works of the law, and sometimes rightly so. Let's say you're late for work. Your supervisor might ask, why are you late? Now your lateness needs to be justified in some way. You might answer by saying there was a miscommunication and then traffic was bad. Those things may even be true, but that's not the point. Even if what you say is true, the point is that you are justifying your lateness by saying that it's not your fault. You are justifying yourself by implying that you followed all the rules and you're suggesting that since you've kept the rules, you should be declared righteous by your supervisor. You're justifying yourself by the works of the law. And this may be perfectly acceptable when you're dealing with other people. Our whole court system depends on justifying people by the works of the law. And it's a good thing it does because this is a good way to keep peace in society. Things are different in God's courtroom. As Paul says a few verses earlier, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. And the law he's talking about is not the law of your supervisor or even the law of our land. He's talking about God's law. We know the kinds of things God expects of us in his law. We should honor him and his word. We should be a good friend, a good husband, a good wife, a good student. In whatever station any of us find ourselves, we should love the people around us. We'd like to believe that most of the time we do a pretty good job at doing what God's law says. And if someone challenges that, we're quick to defend ourselves. We tend to think that if we are satisfied with how well we keep God's law, then he is satisfied too. But to this, God would say, if that's what you think, then you haven't really listened to my law. Back in verse 19 of this chapter, we're told, whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law. In other words, you can't just pick the parts of God's law you're good at and ignore the rest. Whatever the law says, it says to you. Maybe you're good at keeping the parts of the law about working hard and loving your family, and that's good. But how about loving your enemy? How about pure motives in everything you do? When we compare ourselves to God's law, every mouth is silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. That's what happened to Jesus' disciple, Peter. Peter was the kind of person who always had something to say. When Jesus said the disciples would forsake him, Peter said, even if everyone falls away, I never will. Then a few hours later, Peter was denying that he knew Jesus. And when Jesus looked at him from across the courtyard, suddenly the man who always had something to say was utterly speechless. Every mouth is silenced. All Peter could do was run away and weep bitterly. As we dig into scriptures, Jesus is looking at you and me today. He's holding his perfect law in front of us and saying, everything in my law applies to you. It's funny how the law of God suddenly dries up all our talk about being a pretty good person. We can't be saved that way. We are justified by faith. Paul is speaking about faith in Jesus, our perfect substitute who kept the law in our place. This kind of thinking is found nowhere in our dealings with one another. If you're late for work and your supervisor asks you why, you're probably not going to look for justification by trusting in a substitute who has arrived on time to do your job perfectly in your place. But that is how we are justified before God. And God wants us to see it. He wants us to look at Jesus in whom we are justified. Even though it's not easy to look, when Jesus was crucified, it was a gruesome sight. It was shameful, horrible, bloody, grotesque. It's the kind of thing decent people don't talk about. The thought of nails piercing hands and feet make us want to turn away, but God didn't hide it, just the opposite. He made it the focal point of all human history. 
for thousands of years. He said it was coming. And for thousands of years since, he's been calling our attention back to it. Why? Because here is your sinless substitute. And because of his suffering and death on your behalf, you are justified before God. It's yours simply through faith in Jesus. So before you even think about being a good friend, a good husband, a good wife, a good student, you are already justified before God, forgiven of all your sin and headed for heaven. If God hadn't said it, we'd never believe it. It's like collecting a paycheck without working. It's like winning, winning the lottery jackpot without even buying a ticket. It's like a constant flow of clean laundry without anybody throwing a single piece in the wash. But God has said it, and so it's true. Your salvation is figured entirely apart from anything you have ever done. You are justified by faith alone. In Luther's German translation of tonight's verse, he added the word alone so that the verse reads, for we maintain that a person is justified by faith alone, apart from the works of the law. Through the years, some have accused him of adding a word to scripture that wasn't there in the original. Luther points out that the word alone, in fact, says exactly what the original text says. Since there is absolutely no work for us to do to be justified before God, we are indeed saved by faith alone. And so we are through Jesus Christ, our Lord. See you next time.